welcome back to a brand new episode of Collider Dailies. I'm your host today, Maggie Lovett, and joining me in the hot seat for once is... John Algett. Yes. So we are doing a little bit of something different. We haven't done an episode quite like this before, and I'm very excited about it because I think it um, kind of plays off what we've been talking about a lot on the episodes in the last couple of weeks, which is X-Men 97, but with a twist. <laughs> X-Men 97, as of late, has kind of been a bit of an obsession, I think, for the both of us. Yes. Uh, one of us more than the other. Yes. But you know, that's just typical. Uh <laughs> yes, I have had such bad brain worms that I even recently procured for myself a Magneto action figure to join Zemo because I love my men in purple. Yes. See, so can, can I admit something to you? Yeah, you can always admit this? something. Yeah. Uh, so I didn't buy this for myself. I actually initially bought this to send to you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm sorry for just going ahead and getting one for myself. That's fine. Now I've got a Magneto to sit on my shelf. Now we've got <laughs> Magnetos for our conversations about X-Men 97. And as I said, this is an episode with a bit of a twist. So rather than just talking about the episode, which, you know, we've already talked about at length, we are actually going to talk about our dream fan casts for a live action X-Men 97. Now there are rumors that they are going to be rebooting X-Men for live action. Uh, we have absolutely no details as to what that might be, when that might be, but I feel like since so many people have been talking about X-Men 97 and the animated series, and there seems to be like a clear interest in people wanting to see those characters and those versions of those characters brought to life in live action, that it felt like a really fun episode for us to talk about since we were going to do something pre-recorded and like we wanted to make sure that like we weren't talking about, you know, stale news. So why not just do something fun and talk about actors that we would like to see play these characters that have been occupying so much of our brains for like the last, what, month now, I guess? pretty close now i do want to i do want to preface this a little bit i want to add a little like disclaimer to my choices mm -hmm. uh i suck at fan casting fan casting <laughs> has never been anything that i've been good at uh i'm usually the kind of person who like i won't think about who should play a part until somebody else says hey i think this person should play a part and then i go oh yeah no you're right uh so having to come up with people to fill some of these roles i struggled but yeah. I, I, th I think that I got some decent picks in there. So I am really excited to see who your picks are because I'm on the entirely opposite side of the spectrum. I love fan casting. I have been doing fan casts for as long as I have known about ca the casting process. Like there this are- me not at all. Like I <laughs> literally have binders that I have like printed out pictures from like bad ink printers in dial up days where I was like fan casting characters for like stories I was coming up with or like creating characters in the TV shows that I loved. So like, this is something I've been doing for a very long time. And this entire episode kind of was born out of me tweeting about who I would love to see play Magneto. So we're going to start with not Magneto because we're going to leave that for last. <laughs> and let's start with a character that both of us love, Scott Summers. Oh, yeah. So do you it's want me place. to go first or do you want to go first? Because I am like morbidly curious to see who you have picked for like one of your favorite characters. I can go first, but you're the host, so you get to decide who goes first. Oh, this is true. See, I was like, I was not going to put you on the spot, but now I am. So who do you want to play Scott Summers? So this was one that I, I'll be honest, when I thought about it, I was like, I have no idea who could possibly fit that. There, there have been a lot of, I've seen a lot of fan casts mm -hmm. over the years of this character, and I tried my best to not let those fan casts dictate what i went with mm -hmm. but instead i was just i was just thinking of people who i thought fit the vibe of cyclops mm -hmm. and having said that this name might not necessarily in like you might have the knee-jerk reaction to go that doesn't fit what you just said at all but when you think about it it i think it works and that is jared padalecki now here's the thing when you hear that name you probably immediately think supernatural no, Just I fine. immediately thought Gilmore Girls. <laughs> okay, that's fair too. Uh, 
I was looking at I was looking at his performance in Walker more than mm. anything. And when I was thinking about that, I was like, you know what? That feels that feels very much like how I would want a live action Scott Summers to feel. Uh, sort of like he he can have a sense of humor when it's time to have a sense of humor, but then he can kind of flip that switch and suddenly he's intense and he's the cop that we all know that Psychops is. Uh, and also just on top of that, I kind of just want Padalecki to have the opportunity to have a larger lead role in a like major blockbuster. Mm -hmm. I would like to see that. So that's why I put him there. That is, okay, so right off the bat, I feel like we are not going to have any of the same picks at no, all. not I even. Never, I would be surprised if we have any that are the same. But I will say, I did pick somebody who's from Texas. I picked Glenn Powell for Scott Summers because I think I that think of him. I right, like it's so interesting to see like who we are both going to pick for these characters. I picked him because he also kind of has at least like as hangman in particular i feel like he threads the needle of being like super serious and like by the books but also being very funny being very cocky because scott can be very cocky especially yeah. depending on like where in the comics they might be pulling inspiration from uh so i went with him i felt like he is like the perfect leading man type he's very charming i would love to see like the romance between scott and gene play out like i just think that he possesses those qualities like the same qualities you're saying that jared possesses so i think it's like kind of funny that we both picked texans <laughs> like, who honestly i think both could do the part really absolutely well. yeah so apparently we just think scott summers screams hook him <laughs> yeah apparently uh <laughs> and like i think it's really interesting to see now who our gene is like who do we see scott with uh because i feel like when i was younger i love james marston as scott like absolutely obsessed with cyclops when i was younger but i never really felt him and gene and those movies at all i just didn't really ever buy that romance so i will go next and saying who i picked for gene and maybe this is like really blatantly obvious and maybe a very pedestrian pick because i just went with somebody who was in like a natural redhead uh but i picked karen gillen and I know that everybody really wants her to, you know, and she's obviously been in the MCU, but this is, you know, we're, she doesn't look like Nebula, so it's fine. And I know people want her for the DC universe for like Poison Ivy, but I think she would be really great uh, as Jean. And I think that, you know, we saw um, like Amy Pond be this kind of like emotional anchor for a lot of characters. And then like, we also got to see her experience like some motherhood and like, the the loss of a child like specifically thinking about like her arc as amy pond i think would fit really nicely with jean's arc uh and so i i just see her as jean and i also think she would pull off goblin queen excellently <laughs> like that would be something that she would just be a killer as uh, and i also think that she and glenn would look really good together uh, so that was kind of where I like I couldn't pick Gene and Scott without picking them together. And so that's where I went. So I I definitely do like that pick. And I, I obviously I like Karen Gillan quite a bit. I love her so much. Um, been a fan of her since watching her on Doctor Who. Loved her work in the MCU. And also like one one role of hers that stands out for me and will always stand out for me is Oculus. I thought mm. she absolutely crushed it in that. So definitely a fan of that. However, she I was when Jared I was, Padalecki. Like that's what's so funny about our picks is like she doesn't seem like she would go with your no Summers pick. So I'm I'm so curious to see who yours is. Here's here's the thing. Uh, a reoccurring thing that I think you're going to see throughout all of my fan casting is a lot of these actors or people who I just want to see more of them. Okay. And that is like I feel like it is no more the case than in the case of Jean Grey here, which is uh Morphid Clark. Oh. I absolutely loved her in Rings of Power. Mm -hmm. And so as selfishly as it is, I was just sort of like, I I just kind of want to see what she you would look do with great Jean as a redhead Grey. too. She probably would, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't even thinking about the red hair, to be honest. Uh, I just think that she is she is a fantastic actress, and I feel like for for a character like Jean Grey, Jean Grey is by far the most like conflicted personally 
character on the <laughs> team. She has so much, she has gone through so much and she is, she has to deal with so much trauma and so much like just, just so bull crap that she has to deal with across the board. So I feel like you need to have a, a real powerhouse actor in that part. And I think that Morphe Clark could pull it off. And also, yeah. as I said, I just kind of want to see more of her. I could see that. I really could see that. My one problem there is though, is that I, and I didn't think about the pairing with Scott with this one as much as another pairing that we're going to talk about later, because yeah. I feel like while that is important, it isn't as important to me um, as the character being able to just stand on their own. My yeah. one problem here is that Morphin Clark and Jared Padalecki, I don't think line up nearly as well as I would want them to, but still I'm not, yeah. I wouldn't say no. Also, their height difference would be extremely comical because she's tiny and he's so tall. <laughs> yeah. He's, here's the thing. You pair him up with almost anybody and he's going to tower over them. So that height difference is going to be there regardless. Yes. Um, so going on to like one of my favorite picks of this entire, like obviously I'm very partial to my Magneto pick, but I am beside myself with joy with who I picked for Hank. I love Beast so much. And in trying to figure out who I would cast for him, it wasn't so much about the physicality of it, but so much more about his vocal annotations and like his intellect, because I think that's kind of like the biggest part of him. And the biggest part of him is the fact that he's the beast, but that's like, you do that with CGI. So yeah. like, I wasn't so much looking for that, but I also think that like the person I picked would be really good if they ever did like flashbacks to like when he was not as blue. <laughs> And that is Matt Berry. <laughs> I, <laughs> okay, yeah, I can get by that. <laughs> so thrilled with that idea that came to me. That is <laughs> that is a better pick than mine. I <laughs> will just throw that out there. Like, and I was really partial to like Kelsey Grammer playing him because I think again oh, he yeah. had like the vocal tone for Hank because there's a certain degree of like I'm so much smarter than everybody in this room, but also I'm like kind of a like a flirt and like kind of funny and also like I don't want to make it seem like I'm the smartest person in the room which Kelsey always did so great with but yeah. also I just think Matt Berry would just kill it <laughs> yeah Matt Berry would do like as I said I I um, I immediately like your pick better than mine uh <laughs> but going with my pick this is this is one of the few that I have like two potential ones that mm -hmm. I go with because for me as you sort of pointed out the big thing with beast is picking the personality, mm -hmm. picking, picking the voice, picking the sense of humor. I wanted to go with somebody who I felt like would be fun to watch in the role more than necessarily me thinking that they like fit it really well or that they like looked the part or anything like that. So the, the primary one that I went with was Chartel Colby. Uh, oh. Copley. I, I always struggle to say his name because like my tongue just wants to like curl up in a ball when I say it. Uh, I loved him in District 9. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed, like, pretty much anything that Blomkamp had him in, I I adored him in. And for me, the the role that made me, like, think, like, I could see him as Beast is his part in A-Team, weirdly enough. Because I feel like that's almost, like, kind of the personality that I would want to see from Beast. This, like, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm smart, but I might not necessarily work super well with people necessarily i'm just like i'm gonna be over here in a corner doing my own thing which is sort of what i would like to see i was a little bit tempted just to say kelsey grammar let's be honest yeah. i was just like let's just let's just let him keep doing it because he he killed it he crushed it my other my other choice for hank was actually nathan fillion uh because i think that he he would just have so much fun he would. with the part of beast which is purely just down to it would be fun it was yeah. really, but that's why it wasn't my primary was because I didn't have a better reason just then. It'd be fun and I want to see it. And I have definitely seen Nathan Fillion as a fan cast for Beast over the years. Uh, so that one is a fun one. Um, the next one is a character that I think people basically have like two picks for. I've never really, I, like I picked one of the two that everybody always talks about. And that is the fan casting for Logan. Uh, obviously we're all very partial to Hugh Jackman uh, as Wolverine. Uh, but if we go for a short King <laughs> version of the character, which he is, I went with Daniel Radcliffe. I think that Daniel Radcliffe has very much proven that he is 
comedic in the way that Logan is, because Logan, if you watch the animated series, is hilarious. He is not at all like the absolute sulk that Hugh Jackman's Wolverine is in the live action films, who has plenty of funny moments, but like he's just so much more sullen than he is in the animated series. And I think looking at like Miracle Workers and some of the other things that Daniel has done, I think that he would absolutely kill it in the role. And I think he would really embody the version of Wolverine that we get in X-Men yeah. 97. So I'm curious, did you also pick Daniel Radcliffe or did you go with Taron, who I know is everybody's other favorite fan cast, which I'm not against. I, I love Taron. I think he would be great, but he's not my first pick. So I didn't actually even think of Taron. Oh. Uh, because I was, this was one where I was thinking a lot about like, what are, what are the fan castings? And the ones that, the ones that stuck out to me were ones like, Tom Hardy was one that stuck out, but I was like, eh, I, I, I didn't like that as much. Then I thought about like Scott Eastwood was another one that I've seen a lot of people throw out there. Oh, and I, was yeah. like, I can, he, he has, to me, he would strike the same physicality as Hugh Jackman. So I feel like that's almost just doing more of the same. So I did ultimately settle on Daniel Radcliffe, uh, who is to me, a slam dunk winner. Like that's, Absolutely. that's a knockout. It, I, at this point I will be, I would be sad if he winds up not being Wolverine. I know. I feel like that would, like, I can understand why he may not, because I do think he has been enjoying, like, the creative freedom of doing, like, weird stuff and not yeah. being tied to, like, another IP. But at the same time, I feel like he's at a point in his career where he can pivot back to an IP, do that for a while, and still kind of have the freedom to, you know, do weird stuff and kind and of plus, have fun. Plus, who doesn't want to be Wolverine? Right? I'm like, like every boy's dream right yeah. <laughs> we all at some point got butter knives out of the silverware <laughs> drawer and we're running around maybe we shouldn't have been running but we all ran <laughs> <laughs> i definitely know plenty of guys who have done that and maybe not when they were children <laughs> yeah i still do that when i'm washing dishes as That's i'm sitting there washing my knives eventually i'm i'm you know popping those claws as i'm alone in my apartment <laughs> Ah, so I do love that we have at least one where we are uh, simpatico on our picks. That was, I think that was the only one that I foresee us lining up on. Yeah, me too. Which, <laughs> you know, that's the fun of this. And I'm actually really excited to see what other people's opinions are for fan casting in the comments. So if you've made it this far already, be sure to go ahead and start giving us your opinions on who should play these characters and it can be a pipe dream it doesn't have to be like a guaranteed fan cast because obviously this is just us spitballing but i would love to know what other people are thinking because there's definitely like certain characters that people just go yes that character it should only be played by this actor but then somebody presents like an absolutely fantastic option and i'm like okay well that's changed my entire um thought on who this yeah. this character should be played which is very similar to like the situation the next character we're going to talk about which is storm I have seen so many phenomenal fan castings for Storm over the years. Uh, and this one was one I spotted about, I'd say maybe six or seven months ago, somebody mentioned this. It was right after the Sandman came out and somebody said Kirby should play Storm. And I haven't been able to unsee her as Storm. I I think because death is such a like prominent figure in Sandman and there's so much that she gets to explore as that character. I think that's why some people are like, wait, she'd be really great as Storm. So Kirby is my top pick for Storm and I'm curious to know who yours is. So Storm is one that I struggled with mm -hmm. quite a bit because I, I was like, all right, there are a few like characteristics that I'm looking for in mm -hmm. Storm. Like she needs she needs to be a very, she needs to appear very like regal um, because I mean, we're dealing with like basically a goddess. Like she needs to strike me as that. She needs to have that energy, that vibe. She needs to feel like a leader. She needs to, she needs to have a sense of humor. There needs to be, you know, someone who can embody sort of like a mother and a sister at the same time, because that's mm -hmm. sort of the, the piece that she fits in the X-Men as a team. And there were a lot of possible options that came to mind. A few people who really stuck out, but the one who I ultimately decided to go with again, just because I want to see more from her is Jody Turner Smith. Oh, uh, I, yeah, that's a great one. Yeah. That's, I feel like she definitely has the, the physical vibe 
that I w- would be looking for in the character. And on top of that, she's really good at what she does. And I think that she could carry the personality as well. And so getting a chance to see her, you know, basically throwing lightning bolts and summoning tornadoes, I'm on board for. Yes, she's very regal too. So that yes. very... There's there's been so many good fan castings for that character. So I am curious who they will ultimately pick because, you know, there can't really be an X-Men without Storm. You know, she is such a pivotal part of that team uh, that we are probably only a few years away from having somebody cast as her. So I'm, I'm excited um, for that one. The next two I'm going to do as a pair, similar to how we did Scott and Jean. Yeah. And this was actually the one that I struggled the most with. Uh, I obviously love Rogue and Remy, two of my favorite characters throughout my, my entire life. And it all really hinges on how much, like, where they're going with these characters. Um, because they're, they could be very young, they could be in their 20s, they could be in their 30s. Like, it's really unclear as of yet as, as to, like, exactly how old these characters are in X-Men 97. So I did go with like the younger casting that I have seen quite a few people talk about um, over the last couple of weeks. And I kind of saw one for Rogue and I was like, wait, that makes so much sense. I love that casting so much. And that was Sophie Thatcher. Um, I saw pictures of her on the red carpet. She had like a green shirt on and her hair was like reddish brown. And I was just like, yes, put some white fringe up here. And that is rogue but she's so much younger than my preference for rogue i prefer rogue when she's like between like 28 and 32 because initially when she's like first introduced in the comics she's like well into her 30s and then they continue to kind of like age her down as the comics progress with different arcs so i do prefer like when rogue is my age (laughs) so while i can't play rogue uh i would be fine with a younger sophie thatcher-esque actress playing the character and then in doing that i was like well i have to pick somebody for Remy, who is kind of within the same age range, maybe a little bit older, because I think Remy's older than Rogue. So I went with maybe a controversial pick, but I went with Austin Butler. And it is because I do think he could pull off the voice. We know that he can stick with the voice and like really nail it. And I think he has that sort of swagger and charm and I don't want to say a certain degree of smugness, because Remy very much has like a bit of a a smug attitude and there's something about Austin that I think could really embody that and I also think he has like the ability to seem like somebody who's like playing both you know sides sometimes and like there's just something to him that I think would really work uh and again I think he would also look right with Sophie Thatcher but at the same time like on the older side of the spectrum, I would love somebody like a Logan Lerman or like a Ben Barnes for a Remy. Cause I think they both kind of have like the tall and lanky and, and the swagger that kind of goes with that character. And I actually could not come up with a really good solid pick for Rogue in that age range, but it would be somebody like, like a Lucy Hale. She has like really nice eyes. She has like the kind of the, the shape and, and vibe yeah. of Rogue. Uh, so I really struggled with that older side. So it would be an actress similar to her, but I am quite partial to the younger casting of Sophie Thatcher and Austin Butler, which I've seen a lot of people talk about. I've also seen uh, Jacob Elordi, and I don't know if I'm 100% on board with that one. I do like Jacob, but I do think he's a bit too pretty for Remy. Remy has, yeah. you have to call him a swamp rat. You have to call him all sorts of like demeaning names. And there's just something about Austin that like you could picture him in like a dirty billiards parlor, like conning people. There's just something that works with him. Yeah. Jacob Elordi is a weird option for me for that one. Maybe it's just because like when pretty. I think of him, I immediately think of Saltburn. And so I'm thinking of like <laughs> preppier like yeah. characters. So for me, I'm seeing like, you know, like a Bobby Drake or, yeah you know, along those lines yeah uh i'm not thinking i'm not thinking gambit no. uh i will say that when you when you like were like hey let's do fan castings of the x-men characters this was one i didn't even have to think of was gambit like i just immediately wrote it down i was like okay that's done and that is austin butler i just oh. immediately was like it's yeah it's austin butler <laughs> like i don't even need to think about it i love that we wrote like yeah that's austin butler yeah, like he just fits it so perfectly. I was just like, I like, yes, no, that's who that is. And so for me, my rogue was just entirely based off of like 
who fits in who fits with Austin and like it was mostly age range was like the the determining factor here. And to be honest with you, this was one that I'm I'm not entirely confident on. I kind of just threw it in there because I I thought of her and I just went, yeah, she I guess she could do it, and she fits the age range, and so yeah. Uh, and that is Catherine Langford. Oh, uh, I, like that one. I, did, I looked at like, her. I thought about her as well. Yeah, she she just kind of slotted in there, and I was just sort of like, she's good. I've seen her in enough stuff to know that she does a decent job of what she does. Uh, do do I think that she is the knockout that I think that I need for that part? Maybe not necessarily. Yeah. But I think she would at the very least do a good job. And I do think that her pairing with Austin Butler, they'd at least make a cute couple. On they screen. would. Yeah. I think I struggle the most with Rogue because she is. Because you care about that ship so much. Well, yeah. But also I've always seen myself as Rogue because she has like bright green eyes or bright green eyes, like the reddish brown hair. I've got gray hair starting to come in. I was like, well, obviously I would fan cast myself. I have a SAG card. Call me up. You Marvel. could do it. I could. I also can. Do I didn't it. even think to put you in a role. <laughs> I, I should have done that. <laughs> I can also do a killer Southern accent. Um, so <laughs> I did like instantly think, well, I should put myself down. And I was like, no, don't do that, Maggie. Uh, but I really struggled because she has, like, I really want somebody with green eyes to play her because like, there's such a defining feature. It was very much the same thing when I was like thinking of Magneto. I was like, he has such bright blue eyes. I don't want to cast an actor who has like brown eyes. Just kind of like kills the vibe. But we're not yeah. too Magneto yet. <laughs> No, we're going to wait on that because <laughs> have, you need that to be the last one. You need that to be the last one. Uh, so next up was a fun one for me. And I think a, a struggle for you, um, which is Jubilee. I instantly thought Lana Condor, uh, Netflix's favorite darling. I love her. She is gorgeous. She's funny. She's kind of got that youthful energy uh, that I think would really lend itself to who Jubilee is. And I just can't unsee that. I just picture her in that yellow jacket and the goggles and just the whole, like the headband, the vibe. And I just think it would be absolutely killer. So that is who I went with, with for Jubilee. So now that you say, now that you mentioned her, yeah, she would definitely fit it really well. For me, Jubilee, there are two things I was looking for in a Jubilee. Mm -hmm. uh, first and foremost, and I feel like important for obvious reasons is I wanted it to be a, a Asian actress, mm -hmm. obviously. Uh, and I wanted Jubilee to be young, like, and I wanted the actress to actually be young because to me, that is so integral to especially this version of Jubilee that she needs uh -huh. to, she needs to be young and she needs to almost feel naive, even if she isn't necessarily like, she just needs to have that youthful feel to her. And I'll admit, I've got a massive hole in my knowledge when it comes to young Asian actresses. Um, I just straight up could not think of anyone, which is why my fan casting for Jubilee is unknown. Uh, I, I almost would rather us go for a new, for a new face for this character, yeah. especially when you're talking about animated series Jubilee as Jubilee serves a lot of time as the audience surrogate, having someone be totally new, totally fresh faced would probably honestly be a good way to go because then it allows the audience to not see the star and see the character of Jubilee and maybe put themselves on it, you know, connect to them a little bit stronger than they might have otherwise. So that's where I'm sitting with Jubilee. Is it a cop out and a fan casting to just say uh, nobody? you be the judge yes let us know in the comments um my alternative pick for jubilee was the actress who plays uh, lana's sister in uh the netflix series so uh, that was anna cathcart who's the star of exo kitty if we wanted to go younger with jubilee uh, again it all depends on like where are we going with these characters what yeah. point in the animated series are we going for are we going for 18 or are we going for when she first joins and she's like 15 16 years old um, but to the same point, like that was where I ended up being with both Roberto and Morph. I was like, I think they should be unknown actors because, um, there's not a lot of like mask presenting non-binary actors that I could like think of off the top of my head. And I think that's kind of how Morph pre like presents themselves most often in the, the series. And then also like Roberto and, and Sunspot, that's a character that I still think they need to figure out who exactly 
they want this character to be because there has been a lot of like colorism issues with that character throughout the comics and there continues to be a sort of an issue with that in the animated series so that's why i was like i think these should be unknown actors that they cast for those roles i don't even know who to fan cast for them because it really depends on how they're portraying those characters if they were in live action uh so that was i i love those when it, when it comes to roberto when it comes to sunspot i didn't hate his casting in new mutants I mm -hmm. did just didn't like the way that his character was handled in New Mutants. Yeah. But the problem is, is that I can't then just take that actor and slot him in because now he's, I feel too old. Yes. Yeah. He's definitely too old now. He would have to also be like 18 ish with the yeah. Jubilee or he'd run into some <laughs> issues with that relationship. It'd be questionable. <laughs> Uh, and now, last but certainly not least, we are going to talk about my man, the one and only Magneto. And a lot hinges on who you've picked for, Eric. Uh, I am very, 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 very protective of um, Eric Leshner, uh, much in the same way that I'm very protective of everybody's fan castings for the Maximoffs. So I will go first here, so then I can be the judge and jury of your picks. <laughs> so I went with Jason Isaacs. He is Jewish. He is of a, a certain age range that I think that he could play a variety of ages with a little bit of aging makeup to age up Magneto if they're going with a slightly older version of him. We know that he looks absolutely fantastic with white hair. Uh, he has shown that he can be um, evil and he can be neutral and he can be good. And I think that with where he is in X-Men 97 right now, Magneto is very much a morally gray character and I can't picture any other actor nailing the moral ambiguity um, that I know that Jason Isaacs can do. And also I have looked into those piercing blue eyes of his on three occasions now. And I just think that those eyes look like Magneto's eyes that like can either judge you harshly or be like, hmm, that's not a bad idea. Uh, so that is where I am with Magneto and I'm really quite fond of it and people on Twitter seem to be very fond of it and he has always been uh, a first pick for me because I always look for Jewish actors to play Jewish characters canonically uh, and so he's always been among my mix of actors that I think could play Magneto but now that we are seeing X-Men 97's Magneto and that specific aesthetic I think he would just absolutely nail it so now I'm going to sit back, sip my lemonade, and hear who you have for me. So this one was a random, like, I almost stumbled into this choice. But I was sitting there and I was like, okay, for me, the things that are most important for Magneto is I need someone who can both play, play sort of heroic mm -hmm. while also being able to play villainous. They need to be able to straddle both worlds. They need to be an intimidating presence. They need to be someone who can portray a lot of the pain that Magneto has felt over the years, a lot of the anger that Magneto has felt over the years. And so I was trying to think of like who, who could do that, who I think is in the age range that sort of works in my head. Uh, and one actor actually just popped up on a random Google search. And as soon as I saw him, I was like, that is a pick that I bet you Maggie did not think about that might actually be a really interesting one. Okay. And that is Vigo Mortensen. Interesting. Now, when you, Mortensen. Yeah, when you see that, you're going to immediately think Aragorn. But the thing yeah. is, is that I almost want to play off of that expectation of him being more heroic so that when Magneto eventually does betray the team, which we all know he's going to, let's be real. He's going to, it feels that much more painful because you have somebody who was your childhood hero. You have Aragorn stabbing you in the back, but this time he's Magneto. I don't know why. Like, as I said, when I saw it, I don't really have much of a reasoning for it other than just, I feel like he fit my criteria for what I was looking for in Magneto. Yeah. And I, now, now that I said it, I kind of want to see it. Like, yeah. Let's be honest. I just want to see it now. Visually, I can definitely see it. He's not Jewish, so I'm going to hold, Jewish, which I'm is... hold that against you. Yes, <laughs> but I know. As, as as you, as I wasn't even thinking about that. It is okay. I am always thinking about that. Uh, but it was so interesting, too, because like I saw somebody uh, posit the idea of Liev Schreiber as Magneto, and I can't unsee him as Sabretooth 
So I think there is yeah. that holding against him because uh, he has been in the X-Men universe as a baddie. Um, but he is also Jewish and um, is also kind of in the same age range as like Jason Isaac. So like, that's one that I'd be like, well, if they wanted to like re-envision him, I think he's, he looked different enough as Sabretooth that I think a reboot could pull that off. Um, and I do love him, but I do like the aesthetics that you're bringing with Vigo. I'm not against that aesthetically. Yeah. Hey there, editor John here. I'm just chiming in here because this is a point in the episode where I just completely threw the episode off the rails and it turned into like a 10 minute conversation about nothing all that important. So uh, I'm, we're going to edit it out and just get back to the actual discussion at hand you're not missing anything. So, uh, yeah, let's just get right back to it. Aren't pre-recorded episodes fantastic? I think it's fun. I, I'm really curious to see like what they will actually end up doing with that. Um, since it's obvious that they're going to be rebooting the X-Men. Um, and I'm curious to see if they play with that at all with Deadpool and Wolverine. There's, you know, so much X-Men content that we're getting in the next couple of years that I feel like we're going to get so much. And we're probably entirely wrong with our fan casts with where they'll go with things. But I still think it's fun. I think fan casting and like fandom exploration of these characters is like some of the most fun aspects of the X-Men. Like, I think my enjoyment of X-Men has been improved vastly by like fan works over the years, especially since we went through so many years without anything happening on the screen that was X-Men related. I am, I am still just shocked that we haven't gotten X-Men in the MCU yet. Like, well, full, I mean, like the full there's time. reasons for that. It's because of the rights. Yeah. But I mean, like they've had it for a while now. I'm surprised they didn't immediately like, like be like, this is top priority. Let's rush it out. Let's get X Men in there as soon as possible. I'm so glad they didn't. So I'm we glad that they didn't. Another I'm reboot. Surprised by their restraint. Yes, I am very surprised by their restraint, and I cannot wait for that restraint to be loosened so that we will actually get X Men in live action on our screens. Um, though I will be living vicariously through X Men '97 in the intervening days, months, and years until that happens. I cannot wait to see what everybody else's fan casting is for the characters. So be sure that you put them in the comments and I will be going through them and reacting. Be nice about our picks. <laughs> be nice. Um, and I'm really excited to see what folks come up with because I just absolutely love fan casting. Uh, and I can't wait to hear them say how terribly wrong John is for some of his picks just because. <laughs> or how terribly wrong you are. It's fine. I know I'm right. Uh, but <laughs> I I'll be honest with you of all of my of all of my picks the only ones that I'm like really standing by uh are obviously the two that we both picked and then probably <laughs> Morphid Clark. That's the those are the only ones that I'm like don't that's what I want, damn it. <laughs> yeah. I I really want to see what people think of my Matt Berry casting because I don't think I have seen him mentioned once in all of the Hank conversations. I see people being like Henry Cavill and I was like, I mean, sure he's big, but he's he doesn't have the intellect vibe that you need. For... Is it just because they have similar names? Is that what it is, guys? <laughs> It must be, uh, but I'm really excited. So I'm just going to keep saying I'm, I'm excited because I am. And I can't wait to see what is in tomorrow's episode of Collider Daily is on Wednesday. I don't even know who is going to be on with you. So that's exciting. I can't wait to see what you all discuss. See, here's the thing is that I don't even know who's with me as of the recording of this episode. Right? I love a good surprise. Hey, who knows? I have interviews that morning. There's every chance that they'll wrap up. And then it's me. I might be with you again on the opposite we'll side of the screen. We shall but see. We shall see. As you leave your comments, questions, ideas below, also be sure to subscribe to Collider Extra so you are always on top of the latest episode of Collider Dailies and all of the other fantastic content that's on this channel. And uh, give us a thumbs up so we uh, keep getting pushed to new viewers. And until then... I'm Maggie Lovett, and I'm John Algett. Yes.